go. Hello, this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. To see my beautiful collection of minerals and crystals that you may wish to invest in, go to my website. And, well, don't go to my website. I only have a few there because, well, my website's Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. <clears throat> but if you want to see all the minerals that I do have, type in Frank Riser space M period S period on YouTube. Riser is R E I S C R and select mineral identification. Rock and mineral identification. In 9 2014, I started after building my laboratory and shop and prospecting across the world for minerals. Frank's beautiful rocks and minerals. However, in 1993, I started another sole proprietorship business. Frank Riser Video Audio Service, and I am still in business today fixing electronics of all types, SMT to thermonic technology. For anybody that needs assistance in the northern New Jersey area, I am located in Essex County in Caldwell in my shop. High definition TVs, plasma, C uh, LCDs, CRTs, microwave ovens. Uh, appliances, uh, ice makers and refrigerators, for example, uh, laundry machines, I fix them all. <clears throat> Due to a lack of business, I had stopped my electronics company. However, I've started it up again. I've ordered more equipment. This is old equipment. I've ordered more equipment. I ordered a digital oscilloscope for only $110 off eBay and I'm dying for that to come. Today's lecture is on decibels for electrical engineers. Let's get to the lecture. One thing about your scope, if you notice, is it has a graph on it. Each centimeter graph is equal to the time. In this case, um, 20 microseconds. If you take 20 microseconds and you have a waveform on your scope, each centimeter is 20 microseconds. The period is from the peak of one peak of the sine wave to the other. Multiply that by the number of centimeters in uh, microseconds and you will find the period. The reciprocal of the period is equal to the frequency where the time is measured or converted to seconds. Just a quick note. I should do a video on how to read your scope and that may be a subject for another time. Let's get to the decibels. Decibels is a unit of power, acoustic power or voltage. If you're an amateur radio operator, you're familiar with decibels. You may have a transceiver, in this case we have a 5 watt transmitter. 5 watt is a legal output and no higher for an amateur radio, except for repeaters. It goes, the transmitter goes through a long coax cable and similar to the high tension wires and power engineering that you see along the road that go to substations, wire is not perfect, but we often consider it to have zero everything, zero impedance and resistance in practice uh, problems and engineering, but remember all wire has impedance, resistance, reactance, susceptance, inductance, capacitance. As small as it may be. 
So, in this case, there's a three decibel loss in this long coax cable. This possibly could be hooked up to a audio amplifier to an antenna with a three decibel gain or a gain as high as you wish. A gain high enough to bring you back to a five watt output. This type would be a dipole. Yagi antennas are used for TVs. They are not built correctly to receive AM and FM radio stations. Why? Impedance is incorrect because the antenna leads with the director and reflector are of the wrong length. Power. Power and acoustic energy. The formula for a decibel is 10 times the base 10 log of the power output divided by the power input. It is simply a ratio, which equals 10 times the base 10 log of power, in our case over 5 watts. What would that equal? Notice, in this equation, we have only one unknown variable, and you will be able to solve for that one known unknown variable easily yourself with a good understanding of algebra. So let's go to voltage. I'll try to make this fast so I don't bore you. Voltage is 20 times the log, base 10, of the output voltage divided by the input voltage, which could be the reference voltage. There we go. Here we have an operational amplifier. We have 10 volts in. But the amplifier is tied to an input VCC of 5 volts. Therefore, the output would also be reflective of the VCC of 5 volts. What is this in decibels? In decibels, it is 20, because we're dealing with voltages here, times the base 10 logarithm of 5 volts, the input, wait a minute, the output, 5 volts, the output, divided by the input, 10 volts which equals negative 6. When you configure an operational amplifier this way, your decibel gain, measured in DELs, will be negative 6. And that is a decibel loss in voltage. So why do we use decibels? <clears throat> because decibels are a logarithmic entity. When you plot voltage and power on a graph, you often miss because of the wide range of values of power, the high power and the small power specifics or characteristics. When you plot it on a logarithmic graph, you get more detail between the high power output of the uh, transmitter, or whatever you have, and how it behaves when its voltage terminates to zero. How does that look on a graph? 10 volts in from this operational amplifier. 10 volts in <clears throat> on a linear scale looks like this. Well here we can see 10 volts. But here the line becomes so close to the frequency on the, on the horizontal axis that we cannot see any detail. What is happening here? Use decibels and plot it on a logarithmic scale. And we get this graph. We have our 10 volt source. It ramps up and down on a horizontal axis measured in Hertz. 1, 10, 100, 1 k hertz, 10 k hertz, 100 hertz, uh, kilohertz, kilohertz. Notice that 100 kilohertz, the detail that you can see in the demolition of this graph. Always state what your decibels refer to. Power or voltage or maybe a house. Six decibels halves the quantity. So if you have a six decibel value for 100 watts, your output will be 50 watts half, and 50 watts is lost. 
If you have six decibels of a house, you wind up with half a house. I do have a sense of humor. Let's take a look at what decibels mean to us as we experience them. This is a child's toy, 1979, and quite a miracle, and I wish this would make a great kit to build. Even though it's 1979, it does have an SMD chip in it. It's an audio amplifier. It's an audio oscillator. An audio oscillator. I have to hook it hooked up to my power supply at 9 volts. And we will connect it. There we have it. I just turned it above human hearing so you can hear me instead. What are we listening to? We are listening to decibels, amount of energy, of acoustic energy in the air. How can we tell? We can tell by using a decibel meter. Let's see what this looks like on the frequency counter. It is putting out a frequency right now above audio frequency. We can't hear it very well at all, too. Not at all. And we're operating at 15, 18 kilohertz or 19 kilohertz. Move it down. We're now operating at 10 kilohertz, 0.4. No. No, is that correct? 10.9 kilohertz, almost 11. Move it down. 1.3 kilohertz. 0 0.78, 0 0.8 kilohertz. Point zero seven six kilohertz. Let's see what this looks like on the oscilloscope. I'm getting a new digital scope. This is my POS 20 megahertz bandwidth scope. But I got it real cheap. Mom yells at me when I buy myself new toys. Here we see above audio frequency. 
I'll turn this light off so we can see a bit better. Here we go. There's some distortion in it because the potentiometers are scratchy or, in other words, corroded. Now we can hear it. Well, up to time scale. Now that's a nice waveform to see. Where's my trigger? We have destroyed.